Chatting now with Christy Turnbull, the president of the Eastern Air Netball Association. Christy, how are you going? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. Joe Franklin, our regular correspondent for the league, is not available today, so we're chatting to Christy, the president of the league, and I'm sure she's going to bring us a wealth of knowledge. Uh, Obviously, she's all across the league, so let's get straight into it. And we had just the two games over the weekend in round four, starting off with Central Air United getting the win over Cal 66-36. to Yeah, this was a, a probably a much bigger margin than the Cowgirls would have liked. Um, CEU are, are a very strong team. They came into it with a full side um, last weekend. And unfortunately, Cal had two of their um, defenders in Claire and uh, Emma out, and that they certainly lacked height down in that defensive end on Saturday. Um, so it, it's not probably a surprising win, um, but certainly um, Cow yeah wouldn't have wanted that thirty goal margin there. They would have liked to see that a lot closer. The CEU are a very good team. Um, they they just play the ball. They play the game so very very well, and uh, yeah they just just got to jump on Cow, and Cow couldn't close that gap. And our other game for the weekend, Kimber Districts getting the big win over Ports 67-19. to Yeah, even bigger margin. Um, definitely a, a disappointment for the Ports girls on Saturday with that margin. Um, Kimber, top of the ladder, undefeated to date. They were always going to win this game. Um, but Ports Port came in a little bit depleted as well due to illness, unfortunately. Um, but they certainly, I don't think they would have expected it to blow out to, to a nearly 40 goal margin there. Uh, Port's put up a great fight, but Timber, uh, they're almost untouchable this year. Uh, they've just got from right through the court, uh, all seven players just yeah hold it together and play the game so well together. And they've been doing it for years. They don't have too many changes up there year in and year out. So um, I think Ports will come next time they meet. Uh, hopefully Ports can close that gap, but well done to Timber. It was a good win. And Eastern Rangers had the bye there in round four. So a bit of an odd schedule for round four with the top team playing the bottom team and the second team playing the second bottom team. So sometimes when the schedule goes that way, it's not a surprise to see those big margins, but it is what it is. So we'll look forward to round five where we've got Central Air United taking on Eastern Rangers. Yep, so Rangers will head up to Klein Cutter uh, this weekend, and this will actually be a battle for second spot. So um, this is two versus three, but they're both they're only separated by percentage at this stage, CEU and Eastern Rangers. So the winner of this will, will secure that second spot. Um, Rangers come in without Nicole Smith, who's their wing attack, but Emily Lovegrove will step up into that position for Rangers. CEU, like I said earlier, um, their height and defensive pressure across the court will be probably the determining factor in this game. Rangers, I've always said, should never be underestimated. Um, they've, they've had massive changes this year with their ins and outs uh, to that A-grade team. But the team that they've put out there, they've got height in um, Jess Breezy in goals <clears throat> um, and they can feed to her very well and, and she's quite accurate. CEU, um, they'll come in fairly unchanged again this week um, and we know that their their full team is their strongest team and um, they'll, like I said, that they'll have um, Rani Tomney in goals. Her high again, Rani's uh, just played association for us a couple of weeks ago. Uh, very accurate shooter and plays that position very well. So I think I think the experience of Centrally United will see them take the win, but I expect that it will be a very hard game um, and it will and hopefully a fairly close margin. Now, we'll cycle back to those two teams in just a moment, but before we do, we'll go on to our next game, Kimber Districts taking on Cal. So Kimber looking to stay undefeated here on top of the ladder. Yeah, Kimber, um, and I suspect that that's exactly what will happen. Kimber will finish um, our round, full round one, uh, having defeated uh, sorry, having stayed undefeated, um, yeah, going in into the next round. Kimber are they're untouchable this year. They've got um, Amber Schilling and Letitia Ramsey in goals. Um, they're, they're very solid back there. They they hold strong um, right across the court. 
um, Kimber just just have defensive pressure and their turnovers through the centre court and down in the defence end are something they do very well and they're able to capitalise on those turnovers. Um, hopefully Cow have got um, Emma, Jordan and Claire Tavern to back in because they'll need that height in defence um, against those Kimber goalies. <clears throat> uh, I haven't heard from Cow whether they will be back in, but if they're back in, that'll help. They'll certainly help Cow's defence. Um, but again, yeah, I think Timber, um, they're a force to be reckoned with this year and I just I think they'll comfortably comfortably take that win and keep their top spot. Okay, and ports have the bye. So with round five coming this weekend in a five team league, you touched on it there. Everyone will have played everyone once. So the first round of the fixture essentially is all finished. Fifteen rounds in the season, so we'll have three rounds of Everyone playing all the other teams. So, Kimber looking like they'll go through undefeated. And then Central Air United and Eastern Rangers, we touched on their game. They're fighting for second spot. Which one of those teams, because they've both got a very similar percentage as well, which one of those teams do you think poses the biggest threat to Kimber the rest of the way? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I think probably CEU will be Kimber's biggest threat. Um Eastern Rangers haven't quite settled yet as a team. If they can get that a settle and just keep their consistent players in the team, that they've had they've struggled a little bit with illness and injuries and that, so they've had a few changes through that team, and they've got a fairly young team in Eastern Rangers as well. So um, I think the experience of CEU will probably be Kimber's biggest threat, um, but Rangers by probably looking towards, you know, the end of uh, round three, uh, what I would call round three, I think Rangers will have got that together um, and will certainly uh, give Kimber a run for their money. But, I, yeah, I, I think CEU will be their biggest challenge. In saying that, um, depending on what happens this weekend, that could certainly change my mind. But at this point in time, that, that would be what I foresee happening. Well, in round two, Kimber beat CEU by 18, and in round three, they beat Eastern Rangers by 19. So it certainly yeah. looks like they're <laughs> the team to beat at the moment, and second and third are both uh, have a bit of work to do and look like they're both in a pretty similar spot. But it's a long season. This is why we play the games, and we'll see how the girls improve as the season goes on, and we'll see if anyone can get close to Kimber. Yeah, yep. I'd like to see if someone can get close to them. I think at this point in time, yep, Kimber are, Kimber are the pinnacle and that's, that's what everyone should be striving to beat. All right, we'll keep an eye on that as the season rolls on. Christy Turnbull, President of the Association, joining us there. Thanks very much for your time today, Christy. No problems at all. Thank you. And, of course, Joe normally covers the Great Flinders Netball Association as well. So in her absence, I'll run through the scores and the upcoming fixtures for you. Round six kicking off with Elliston Districts winning 31-27 to over Air United. A solid effort there from Air United, who only have the one win on the season, taking it to Elliston, who are sitting second on the ladder with only one loss on the season. Our next game, Tumby Bay 59, defeated Lock 45. Tumby Bay staying undefeated in that one. And Cummins Capini, 55, defeated United Yelena, 33, who are still seeking out their first win. And it was the Ramblers with the bye over the weekend. So moving into round seven, which once we get through round seven, everyone will have played everyone once. So we'll have a good idea of how the ladder's shaping up. And we'll kick off with the Ramblers fresh off the bye. They're going to be taking on Air United Air United with one win on the season, but their form appears to be improving, and the Ramblers two wins on the season. So that one should be a nice, tight game at Cummins Complex. We've also got Elliston District taking on Cummins Capini, which on recent form should be a nice, tight game. And to round out round seven, United Yelena taking on Locke. So they'll still be searching for their first win, and Locke will be looking to stay in touch with Elliston Districts in the race for second on the ladder as they hopefully close in on Tumby Bay on top of the ladder. There's your review of round six in the Great Flinders Netball Association, and I look forward to round seven.